as we were praying in the spirit, uh, a vision came. And I saw a larger earthquake. And it was almost like the earthquake, and I heard the spirit say, as this earthquake happens, I'm going to start. In other words, many times when an earthquake happens, especially in the ocean, a tsunami comes. And I heard the Spirit say that when this earthquake comes, it will be a tsunami, but it will be of my judgment and my presence. Because, see, God is establishing vengeance of Him and favor. Vengeance and favor. And one of the things that's happening right now is everyone say Babylon is falling. There will be a diminish and dis dismantlement of Babylon. And Isaiah 61. Babylon is falling. It is the Babylonian or Babylonian system, the world system that's controlled by the Antichrist regimes. <clears throat> they are falling. Isaiah 61 and verse 1, please. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Now, these are also those who have been abducted, taken captive. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So when, you, when you're being attacked, oppressed, man, that's when the spirit of praise has got to come on you. Because the only way to remove the presence of evil is with the presence of God. If you're not a worshiper yet, you're in trouble. You're not a discerner either. It says this, that they may be what? Called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he may be what? Glorified. He said they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall rise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities. The desolations of many generations. Because we have been controlled by Babylon for so long. Generations after generations. You can't rebuild something until it's destroyed. Verse 5, strangers will stand and feed your flock, and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Hmm. You shall be named the what? The priests of the Lord. They shall call, call you the servants of our Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you better be in position for that to happen. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Now, listen to this. Why? Because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous and it will be released. Oh, glory. <laughs> and you shall what? Eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory you shall what? Boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess what? Double Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Oh, snap. For I, the Lord, love justice. Hello? Justice. Righteousness and justice. If you're not living a life of righteousness and justice, you might as well just wipe that away. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. I will direct their work in the truth, and I will make with them an everlasting covenant. Awesome. That's for me and you. It says here, their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles. In other words, your offspring. And their offspring among the people. And all who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the what? Prosperity, whom the Lord has what? Blessed. See, when you are blessed, you are not only favored, but you are prosperous. 
Amen. So we see that this is known as, we are in this right now. We are, known, we are in the year of vengeance and the year of favor of our Lord God. Psalm 2. Psalm 2 verse 7. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with what? Fear and rejoice with what? Trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. The Lord shares with us also, those who fear the Lord will dwell in prosperity. Where there's a reverence to the Lord. In Psalm 35. Psalm 35 verse 27 and 28. Let them what? Shout for joy and be glad. Who favor my righteous cause. Who what? Favor his, in other words, they promote his righteous cause. They promote his plan. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. See, God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be above. He's never told us that we're to live a life of poverty. And when somebody takes a decree of poverty, they're an idiot. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. Hallelujah. Go to Malachi 3. Malachi 3 and verse 8. Will a man what? Rob God. Would anybody try to hold up God? Well, a man robbed God, but you say, what way have we robbed you? And he says, in tithes and offerings. You know, people still argue over this whole thing. Oh, God doesn't ask for tithes and offerings. No, you're not going to go to hell if you're not tithing and offering, but you ain't going to be blessed. It's impossible. Unless the devil blesses you. Hello? He said, you are cursed with a what? So if you're cursed with a curse, anybody that's in rebellion is cursed. It doesn't matter. It brings a curse to you. People don't realize that no matter what they do, they have a, a pocket, a purse, or a bank account that has got a lot of holes in it. It can never hold money. That's what a curse does. He said, you are cursed with a what? A curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me in this, try me in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be enough room, enough to what? Receive it. See, what happens is somebody will tithe or do an offering one time and go, well, it didn't happen. Consistency is the key. Hello? If you're not a consistent person and God says, well, you're just trying to use me anyways. In fact, he even lets you use him for a little while. But then he'll back off. Look, at this is what he says if, if you do this. If you give tithes and offerings to the Lord. See, people are consoling, oh, you're giving to a man or to a church. No, you're giving to God. He said this, if you do this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sakes. In other words, I'm going to protect your investments. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you what? Blessed. For you will be a Delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Blessed, prosperous, and favor. Why? Because this is the year of vengeance and it is the year of favor. I'm telling you, Babylon is coming down. 
Revelation 6. Babylon is falling. All the Obamanites, the Clintonites, the, Ob the Ob Bidenites, they're coming down. All of this virus and all of this masking that are killing people, they're coming down. They're all going to be exposed. Nobody's going to escape the hand of God. Oh, happy days. You know, the Bible tells us that we will see the reward of the wicked. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, please. Praise God. Speak it with me, please. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a loud voice, like thunder, come and see. Now I want to share something with you. Because we have been traditionally taught, and, and, and I'm not saying that, you know, we got seals, trumpets, and bowls, you know, in the book of Revelation. And seals, which are also connected to it, doesn't mean that we're in tribulation because the seal is broken. Everybody with me? A seal can be broken and tribulation can start later. Seals are to be broken to release prophetic moves of God. When God breaks a seal, this is what's coming. This is what's coming. This is what's coming. Or this is what's beginning to happen or start. But I believe more of the seals can happen before tribulation and your bowls and trumpets happen during tribulation. But that's possible. Hallelujah. Okay, so he says he opened the first seal, right? And I heard one of the four living creatures say, come and see. Verse 2. And I looked and behold, a white horse who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. Well, we know Jesus doesn't do this. Amen. So it's a, a white horse representing false prophets, false teachers. Does everybody get that? False doctrine. <clears throat> Antichrist regimes. Things to that degree. Verse 3. And when he opened the second seal, I heard a second living creature saying, Come and see. And another horse, fiery red, went out. And he was granted to, uh, to the one who sat on it to take what? Peace from the earth. Well, was peace taken from the earth? Yeah. People were... Panic and fear, big time, because it is epidemic. And that the people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Man, people have been killing each other for a while. I mean, if you sense this, anger and hatred is reaching its climax. There is so much irritation in the atmosphere wherever you go. That's why you need to have the presence of God to overcome it before you kill somebody. Verse 5, it says, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it here had a pair of scales in his hand. That is associated with weight, money. Somebody with me? Why? Watch what he says now. And he, and he had a, a, a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard the, a voice in the midst of a four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the what? And the wine. Well, who's the oil and the wine? We are. Amen? So we see here that there's false doctrines going to be man released. There's going to be peace taken. Fear will replace peace. And, and the pair of scales is associated with currency. Currency. Denarius is a small silver coin. It's uh, usually from the Roman Empire. Uh, and, and there's also a gold one that they had from the uh, ancient Roman Empire, which equaled 25 denarius. Now, we know that the silver and gold is the Lord's. Amen. 
Is everybody ready to say that? The silver and gold is the Lord's. And so again, they had, uh, one of the things that I, I, I it just kind of blows me away here is in, in this, you got Dinar in Iraq. Now, Iraq is a central area. It's also called, known as Shinar. And, and Iraq is a money, wealthy, oil, prosperous, that's been floating over for multiple years. Living in Babylon rule for such a long time, the global system is Babylonian rule. Amen. It's controlled by the wealth of the wicked. There are central banks that are independent from government. People think just because the Federal Reserve says it's the Federal Reserve, it's an independent uh, counterfeiting marketing operation. <laughs> government issued money, amen, there's what they call fiat money. It's banknotes used in the 11th century in China. That's when it started. President Nixon in 1970 or 71 or something. He removed the faith in the gold that backed money. He said, no longer. They're just going to print money. And he put the faith in the government to protect the money. Does everybody understand that? So now the money was supposed to be backed by faith in the government instead of faith in gold. But remember, the silver and gold is the Lord's. It, we, it's what we call fiat money. The government-backed currency is called fiat money and still controlled by the central banks of Babylon, the Babylonian system. These regimes keeping people in bondage with interest loans, debts. That's how the devil puts people in. He loves to get people in debt. Then he's got control of them. But God said this Babylonian system is going to fall. It's going to fall. We are in that process right now. Babylon is falling. And Revelation 14 and verse 6. Let's speak it. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having an everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has what? Come. That's why the gospel is being preached everywhere right now. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of the water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is what? Fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That is also known as the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, and love of money. Hello. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on their forehead or on his hand or injection, hello, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day and night who worship the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. The gospel is being preached. Why? Because the fall of Babylon is happening right now. Many will worship the money and the beast. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, in verse 6, now godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich 
fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you men or women of God flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Wow. Love of money. You know, everything you see has been promoting the love of money for years. Prosperity. But the false prosperity. The rich in fame. James chapter 5. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy as long as it's not your God. But so many people make money in their jobs their God. And not even realize it. Or they become an idol. James chapter 5 verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Look at how many wealthy, wicked there are in the world. Your riches are what? Corrupted. And your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded. And their corrosion will be the witness against you. And will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Treasures of wrath. What? God's wrath. Indeed the wages of the laborers. Who moved your fields. Which you kept back by fraud. Cry out. And the cries of the reapers. Have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You have lived on the earth. In pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts. As in the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the just. He does not resist you. <clears throat> Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and what? And latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you condemn Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, even and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate <laughs> and what? Merciful. Why, he double blessed Job, didn't he? Amen. Psalm 105, verse 26. Babylon is falling. Don't believe the news, they lie. They're falling too. We see news media is nothing but prophets of Baal now. The secular news, you know, mainstream. Psalm 105, verse 26. He said that he sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them. And the wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made dark. And they did not rebel against his word. He turned their waters into blood. He killed their fish. Their land abounded with frogs. Even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and lice in their territory. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He struck their vines also and their fig trees, and splendored the trees of their territory. He spoke, and locusts came, young locusts without number, and ate up all the vegetation of their land, and devoured the fruit of their ground. He also destroyed all the firstborn of their land, the first of all their strength. He also brought them out with what? Silver and gold. This is known as what happened in the Exodus. Amen. There was none feeble among his tribes. Everybody got healed. Egypt was glad when they departed. For the fear of them had fallen upon them. He, 
You spread a cloud for covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked and he brought quail and satisfied them with bread of heaven. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. He brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. And he gave them the lands of the what? Gentiles. And they inherited the labor of the nations. That they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise the Lord. This is what we call the exodus from Babylon. Again, we are coming closer and closer to what we call a Red Sea moment. In Numbers chapter 9. God is perfect, and he always has the last say. No matter what you see happening, no matter what's going on, he's going to have the last say. And everybody's going to stand before him, and nobody's going to get away with it. Whether you believe it or not. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. You're going to stand before him and give account. Now, something is happening, and again, everything is connected to the Feast of the Lord and the Tabernacle, and you've heard me say this over and over and over. And the first three Feasts of the Lord are essential, because only Jesus can fulfill the Feast of the Lord. Amen? And it's amazing, because God has prophetic time sequences that connected to these things, and, and, and with the Feast of the Lord. And so many things happened in history, and I can't, I can't go over them all. But I, I would mention a few powerful things that had happened. And they actually happened in the, what we call the second Passover. In the second Passover, many things happened. Israel became a nation. It was in May. Many things happened. And I want to share a couple of things here, but in, in, in Numbers 9 and, and verse 1, let's speak it together. Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, in other words, the Exodus, saying, let the children of Israel keep the Passover as at its appointed time. On the 14th day of this month, at twilight, you shall keep it at its appointed time. According to its writs and ceremonies, you shall keep it. So Moses told the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at twilight in the wilderness of Sinai. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did. And there were certain men who were defiled by a human corpse so that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and Aaron that day. And those men said to him, We have become defiled by a human corpse. Why are we kept from presenting the offering of the Lord at its appointed time among the children of Israel? And Moses said to them, Stand still, that I may hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If any of you or your posterity is unclean because of a corpse, or is far away on a journey, he may still keep the Lord's Passover. On the 14th day of the second month, that's 30 days after the first Passover, they shall eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. <clears throat> they shall leave none of it until morning, nor break one of its bones. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man who is clean and is not on a journey and ceases to keep the Passover, that same person shall be cut off from among his people because he did not bring the offering of the Lord at its appointed time. That man shall be, bear his sin. And if a stranger dwells among you and would keep the Lord's Passover, he must do so according to the writ of the Passover and according to its ceremony. You shall have one ordinance both for stranger and for the native of the land. Again, the Lord's Passover. It was the beginning of the Exodus. 
on Passover. Amen? Then the plagues came and everything else started to happen. And this is, the, and, and, and again, they were, God was removing them from Egypt, which we call the Babylonian system. And then 30 days later, a second Passover was established for those that couldn't make it or missed it. Or they were unclean, maybe because of war or they were in battle, touched a, 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 or buried or did something and touched a, a corpse or whatever. Not until 30 days after was a second Passover. That's around, now we're coming to another Passover towards the end of May, 23rd, 26th, somewhere around there. So we're seeing a second Passover is going to be established between the end of May and the beginning of June. Again, that is the Red Sea moment. That's when God brought the Egyptians into the Red Sea and destroyed them on the second Passover. Israel became a nation on the second Passover. Many events happened on the second Passover. <clears throat> also, we got a jubilee coming. And it's been 50 years since Nixon, hello, declared the fiat money in the area to where it was no longer backed by gold, but it was backed by government. We also have 50 years where abortion was approved. You know, ever since abortion was approved, this country became cursed. Things got worse. But all of these things are coming up. Where the wealth of the wicked is going to be laid, released into the hands of the righteous. The Babylonian system is falling. And I really truly believe that you're going to see no more abortion here coming soon. At least in this country. It's coming to an end. Things are going to be changed differently. There will be no more indoctrination in schools. There will be doctrine in schools. Hello? There will be true education. Things are going to change. The media will collapse. Many things are going to... Now, it doesn't, doesn't happen overnight, but there's a beginning of it. Amen? You and I will see that beginning. Hallelujah. The money, everything. We are coming to a vital reset in the vengeance and favor of God Almighty for the kingdom of Christ. It's happening. Go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Anybody want to miss this event? Many are. Many have. And many will. Though will watch others be blessed and wonder why they didn't. 1 Timothy chapter 4. In verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Now the Spirit expressly says, let me tell you, if the Spirit expressly says he's shaking people, that in the latter times some will depart from the faith. Are we in the latter times? Yeah. They will depart from the faith. Oh, they'll still call themselves Christians, but they won't follow like they used to. They won't be close to the Lord. They'll be disqualified as priests, which you must fulfill priesthood before you become a warrior. And he says that they're going to fall from this, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. You know, they call marriage these, all oh, common marriage. Oh, we're together for so many years, we're married. Oh, no, you're not. Not in terms of a certificate ordained by God Almighty. Even the Lord had a certificate, certificate that divorced Israel. Hello? <laughs> it's amazing how human traditions and man-made rules, people think they're going to, everything's good. No, it's God's way. God's way or the highway. <laughs> Verse 4, for every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If you instruct the brother in these things you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives uh, 
fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits little, but godly, godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that now is and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe, which means who follow. Again, there's a lot of people who say they believe, but they don't follow. And God says they're liars. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to the reading, to the exhortation, and to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by the prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate means, means focus on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. For doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Again, Babylon is falling. We are watching it happen. Amen. But we must stay in position no matter what. Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for your warning and your preparation. For you're a good daddy. You always warn us. You always protect us. And you always prepare us. So, Lord, we just ask that what you've released to us tonight will be imparted. And that the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance as you prepare us for those things to come. You said, be ready in season and out. Oh, Lord God Almighty, help us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.